In this video, we're going to talk about 3D modeling in Cinema 4D. So for the first time, we can switch from 2D drawing to 3D modeling. And we can use the shapes and the plans here, the plan views, and also anything that we have created in 2D so far, like logos and other vector graphics, either for architecture and interior design or for graphic design and so on. So let's get started and let's go here to the create panel and go to the third. So we saw we, we, how we can create spline primitives and spline objects meshes. Now we are two generators and we're going to talk about the extrude generator, the lathe generator, the lofts and the sweep. Now let's start with the extrude. Now when you click a generator that's gonna be empty, just like if you remember the spline mask. Now the spline mask was the first generator that we used and we saw that we need to apply a generator, we need to drag and drop the shapes that we created inside the generator. Now this goes the same way for the extrusion. So let's start with something simple and in with the graphic design. So for example, let's say that this is a logo that I want to extrude. Now I've already extruded here, but I want to show you how you can do it. So I'm going to, you, you see here the spline is already inside the extrusion. So I'm gonna click this and place it, drag it outside. So you can see now the 2D object right there. Now here you can see that we have more objects on top of the other. So let's say that I want to extrude this one right here alone. So let me find what it is. There it is right there. And I want to click this and drag it all the way to the top when I created my latest extrusion, which is not there anymore. So I'm gonna create a new one and also want to undock this so I can leave it here. Okay, extrusion, select the object you want to extrude, click and drag, place it there, and there you go. There's the your logo extruded there. Now, with the extrusion, you also have additional parameters. So you can offset, you can also create more subdivisions, now you will see the subdivisions if you have a wireframe, otherwise you won't see them. And just remember that subdivisions are not use useful until you have some deforming to do, but we will see that later on. Or also when you want to do polygonal modeling, not curve modeling like this. And also we have caps, just like the text. So I can create some really neat effect some really realistic rounded effect here, which is not gonna ruin my solid, but it's gonna just make it look beautiful. And also you can change here, just like we saw with the text. Also with some additional features that you may want to explore just a little bit. So look at that. Look how many effects you can give just with a couple of steps, really beautiful. Now, you can see here that when I extrude and I use the object panel here, I'm gonna extrude um, going uh, towards the bottom. Now, this is caused by the spline. So if I want to see the original spline, I can deactivate the extrusion for a moment and select that spline and if I go and select the points, I can see that this, this is a path that starts from here and ends there. Now, to change the direction of the path or, or the creation of this spline, I need to select the points, right-click, and go to point order, 
and say reverse sequence. Now this is gonna reverse everything. And if I activate the extrude command again and use the offset here, now it's gonna work in a different way. It's gonna go towards the top. And this is this should be the correct way to use it. But you can also go the opposite way, just inserting minus and inserting 100. But this is just to show you that also the direction of the spline is important. The path is, is important. The beginning and the ending of the path. Now I want to create another extrusion and I can also go here in the object panel, select that first extrusion, hold control key or command if you are on Mac, click and drag and it's gonna create a copy of that but I want to get rid of that spline inside the first extrusion. I want to create a new one. And this time I want to use these two splines which are connected together. And we saw in previous videos how we can connect objects together. You can do that, of course, and use it for the spline. Otherwise, the spline will only recognize one single spline to extrude. Now, let me show you, if I use this one here, let me create also a copy of that and place it there and move this right here. So right now I am extruding the spline, the first spline. Now if I bring in also these two here, which are right there, so click and drag, place it there. Okay, now you can see that it's extruding those two and not this one anymore. So you can only extrude one at a time. But if you attach them, right click and connect objects plus delete, you can see that it's gonna extrude everything. But be careful here when you are not in the same plane. So you can see that there are many rules that you need to follow, but once you understand those, you can work without any problems with the extrusion. Now you can see here that when I have double lines like this using the outline, command, well, these are going to be extruded as, as a one single object. That's another thing you need to learn. And now let's proceed. Now, when I have a spline mask, which is already a generator, you can see here I am selecting this one. I want to show you where it is. There you go. So this is a mask spline, and inside I have a star which I can continue to edit so I can move around and I think it's something is going strange here let's see what's happening I don't know something got a little bit messed up I don't know why but okay let's try again with moving the circle okay so you can see there the circle is moving inside the object so this is what I can do with the spline mask, pretty handy. And then when I find the correct solution, which could be subtraction or union, we already saw that. Then I can take all this stuff here and place it into an extrusion. So I'm generating something from another generator. It's kind of a two level generator. So I'm gonna go all the way up again, where my latest extrusion is, place it there. And there you go. So I'm constructing here a complex hierarchy. And again, this is the beauty and the usability of the objects panel here that will let you to make all these changes in real time to decide what your final effect will be. And you can see we are generating some really complex shapes here. So we can offset, you can work with the caps, everything real time. Really, really handy, really, really beautiful. Okay, and you can continue to work with your graphic design and create your 3D logos now. Now, another tip about the extrusion. This one here, it's another spline, but in this case is a line, simple line. So when you don't close your lines or your splines or your shapes, or your vector graphics, call them whatever you want, and you extrude, 
you will not extrude a solid, but you will extrude 